Uncover the secret history of Rex Strickland, Eddie Brock's new mentor, and the Sim Soldier program. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the special web of Venom Venom issue number one and find out for ourselves, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join this story, we check on in with Nick Fury Sr. He talks about how him and his team originally found the Grendel symbiote. It was an average day at the office trying to make sure Hydra wasn't smuggling weapons and supplies to the Viet Cong under the Arctic. Well, they ended up finding though they could never have possibly comprehended the Grendel symbiote, a giant dragon created by Null, the god of symbiotes, to conquer Earth. Now, being that this was Nick Fury Sr. and that America was losing in Vietnam right now, he figured the best course of action to really help turn the tide of the war would be to inject some selected soldiers with the black gooey found in the dragon. This would give birth to a brand new unit called the Sim Soldiers, led by Rex Strickland, codenamed Tyrannosaurus. Yes, that's really his name. More like a sexual Tyrannosaurus. At first, the project went off without a hitch. They were taking out Viet Cong left, right, and center. The only problem is, after a while, they started taking out their own men. And then some more, and then some more, and eventually the monster was just off the leash. Fury had to clean up the mess, both in name of saving the war effort, pfft, good job on that, as well as covering his own ass from any potential wrongdoing. The only problem is, who could possibly defeat these horrible alien hybrid monsters? They would need someone who was a certified badass, someone who was a true patriot, someone like Wolverine. Okay, one out of two ain't bad. I am so unbelievably pleased that a book called Venom v. Nom is actually a secret Wolverine book. To make sure the job gets done with pinpoint accuracy and also to make sure there's no more leaks, Wolverine is joined by Nick Fury in the field to finally take out these symbiotes. Wolverine proves to be an expert tracker in this situation, easily able to transverse the jungle. The only problem is the symbiotes are excellent hiders, being able to take what looks to be human form to mess with people. Luckily for our heroes, they have Rex and his flamethrower on their side. You see, ever since the alien costumes went rogue, Rex has actively been fighting against his former unit, again like a certified badass. Fire also seems to be the only thing that affect the symbiotes right now. Again, you gotta recall this is very early on in their life and no one even knows that Sonic's hurt them yet. All of this, as you might have guessed, leads to one giant jungle brawl wherein Wolverine ends up getting covered in symbiote goo himself, which I don't even know how many times that officially makes that he's been symbiotified. Now, before this, Logan and Fury had actually given Rex the chance to flee if he wanted to. After all, he's just a normal, squishy man, but he chooses to come back and fight, seeing this is his own personal cross to bear. Especially after Wolverine used his own healing factor to step on in and save Rex from an explosion, he feels that he owes the Knuckle had a life debt. It's also around here we find out that Fury isn't really Fury, he's a life model decoy. Old Tricky Nick wasn't gonna stick his neck out on something like this, so he decided to send in a robot with a massive payload of explosives to hopefully take out all of the symbiotes. Obviously, Wolverine will be fine. Rex, on the other hand, will not. That is unlikely unless he is willing to once again join with his symbiote, which he does, throwing Wolverine away from the blast. Repaying the favor, and once again showing that symbiotes and their masters are not always evil. Fury and the rest of S.H.I.E.L.D. manage to box up the symbiotes and put them away on ice so that they can be dethawed just in time for the future in Venom Number 1. Fury's also pretty damn impressed by how good Rex was in the field and under pressure, and because of that he decides to offer him a position inside S.H.I.E.L.D. A job which he willingly takes takes as the comic ends. So, that was Web of Venom Venom issue number one, everybody, and I can't lie, when I first heard this comic announced, I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, but then I really started to understand what Donny Cates was doing with his Venom book. And much like the main series this is a spin-off to, it is pure uncut comic book awesome poured directly into your eye sockets. It's a throwback to the days of extreme comics, but the important thing is, is that it's not dumb. Cates knows story structure, respects the reader's intelligence. And also make sure to throw a couple clever curveballs here and there so no one gets bored. Having Wolverine be a surprise focal point of this one shot was really inspired writing and connects very nicely to everything that's happening right now with Hunt for Wolverine. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10. It really surprised the hell out of me. Oh, hey there everyone. I'm Cape Jewel. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. This is normally the part where I tell you to follow me on Twitter at Cape Jewel, check out my Patreon page, my Twitch page, my Instagram, pretty much everything. Don't really have much of a format for this one. Someone just told me that I should change up these outros to keep them from getting stale, and that's what I'm doing.
I, uh, I, I, I got a new hoodie. There's other videos you can watch if you want them. I, uh, don't really know where I'm going here. Working, working without a net. So, uh, thank you for watching. That's appreciated. Maybe give me a like, a subscribe, smash a button if there's a smashable button around. That would be most appreciated. And, uh, yeah, did, uh, did I mention I got a new hoodie? Um, bye everyone. Also, smack things. Smack some. Yep, that's, that's what I do. That's my thing. Yep, bye.